Alas, poor Yorick, for I knew him. Well, friends, Romans, countrymen, now is the winter of our discontent. Oh, yes, I got my A-level English in Shakespeare. And as we'll see in a moment, so most of our politicians know Shakespeare pretty well, too. I think they reckon that a bit of knowledge about the old bard stands them in good stead. And I know you agree with me on that. But now no less than the Royal Shakespeare Company is warning that our love of William Shakespeare is on the wane. And it wants kids as young as eight to be taught it. I'll be asking the artistic director of the RSC why this is such a good idea in just a moment. But first, we ask three MPs to give us their favourite lines. Tomorrow, tomorrow and tomorrow creeps on this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. It's a political play. You learn all about a vision. It's a sort of cautionary tale about the abuse of power and also some wonderful poetry. And tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle, life's but a walking shadow, poor player that struts and frets its hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It's a rather more eloquent statement of Woody Allen's 15 seconds of fame, but that's what, in a way, politics is about. You, you're on the stage, you're off, you make your contribution, you go. Glance thou art, and corda, and shalt be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou holily. Politicians like those sort of comments. <laughs> oh, thanks to Alan Duncan. He really seemed to enjoy yeah. it. Vince Cable <laughs> and Gwyneth Dunwoody, they're all wasted in politics. They're all quoting from Macbeth, of course. We're joined now by the Artistic Director of the Royal Shakespeare Company, Michael Boyd. Welcome to The Daily Politics. Hi. Why do you want, as I understand it, um, children uh, uh, as young as eight to be taught Shakespeare? Well, we're launching this Stand Up for Shakespeare campaign. Children as young as eight is, is one of the, the things we're recommending. We're basically saying three very simple things, that you, you do it on your feet, you start it earlier, and you see it live. Uh, really simple. The, the, the thing of starting that young is they've not got spoilt yet, in a way. Um, I think kids are still into, naturally, rhythmic language, rhyming. The, 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 the playground rhymes are still bouncing around their head. Their vocabularies are still exploding exponentially. And the condition of strange new words uh, is normal for them. They're always dealing with new words. And I, I, I think by the time you get to um, 13 or 14, you're beginning to be embarrassed about it. Uh, um, especially with Shakespeare, which is a playwright. He's not, he, he, it's not works of literature. It's, it's blueprints for playing. And at 13 and 14, you become a bit more self-conscious. Uh, whereas at 8, you can get up there, push the desks to one side of the room and, and be Bottom or Tybalt or Viola. But why is it necessary in 2008 to stand up for Shakespeare? I mean, are we... Are we turning our backs on him? That's, uh, that's the one sort of aspect of the, uh, of the, of the name of, of the campaign that I'm, I'm not really sort of bothered about. I don't think Shakespeare needs anyone to stand up for him, frankly. Uh, 